for about five minutes tonight from the sub. I expect an overflow. I expect an overflow. I can't preach it by myself. I just need 1,200 people to just shout to somebody near you and tell them I expect an overflow. God help me. Those aren't the 1,200 I'm looking for. I'm looking for those of you who've been waiting for your season, waiting on your time. Don't wait for the preacher to tell you I dare to just touch yourself and say I expect an overflow. I expect an overflow. I want you to understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, that faith responds to rightly spoken words. You can tell what kind of faith somebody has by what kind of language they use. There is a tension in this building and even on the airwaves between people who are betwixt emotions. Half of this sanctuary are people filled with faith. But the other half of this sanctuary are people who are dealing with reason. Look at your neighbor and say, which one are you? You have to understand that Isaiah chapter 1 verse number 18 shares with us, come let us reason together. Reason is not a bad thing in its place. But you have to be careful because reason can sometimes assassinate faith. Reason deals with limitation. Where faith deals with expectation. And that there are a lot of people who are not able to have faith because they have too much reason. Faith deals with stuff that doesn't make sense. Reason adds up that which is logical. And many of you tonight, before this preachment is over, are going to have a World Wrestling Federation match in your mind between the faith that God has deposited and the reason that your circumstances are trying to dictate. The great English preacher, prognosticator, Charles H. Spurgeon, once used the illustration between faith and reason. He said that faith can walk 30 miles where reason can only crawl for three miles. He said an occasion took place in which reason begged to go on a journey with faith. And much to his own acknowledgement, faith bowed down to the pressure. And took reason on a journey that only faith can handle. Faith and reason were walking to a, through a tumultuous terrain. And while they're walking through a tumultuous terrain, they came to a large shark infested river. Reason said, we cannot go across to the other side. But faith said, I'm going to swim my way through because there's something on the other side that's waiting for me. When they got to the other side of the river, they found themselves facing a Herculean mountain. And reason said, there's no reason for me to expend a whole lot of energy. Let's just walk around the mountain. But faith said, I don't want to walk around the mountain. I want to climb the mountain. And because I am a man of faith, I don't want us to separate. So faith said to reason, get on my back. And I'll climb and carry you to the other side of the mountain. What faith realized is that sometimes reason is excess baggage. You have to carry reason into places that faith can go by itself. That's why some of you cannot shout over overflow because your reason is telling you it's not going to happen. But for the 1,200 of you who are filled with faith, you know that the odds are stacked up against you. You know uh, that you don't have the best resume. You know that you've got blemishes on your criminal record. You know you've got stains on your credit report. But something crazy is inside of you called faith. And people who know you, they can't see the vision that the Lord has put inside of you because they keep dealing with reason. You keep telling them, I'm getting ready to go back to school and they want to know how when you got two kids and you're over 34 that's because they talking about reason and you dealing with faith like you told your family you're going to start your own business but nobody in your family has ever been able to hold down the job you dealing with a family of reason when you are a person of faith 
Uh, there's somebody in this house who's got the itchy suspicion that 2004 was my last year in an apartment. Uh, faith is telling me that there's a house that's got my name on it. Uh, that's why every now and again you can tell the sign of appraiser. Uh, because appraiser doesn't know nothing about reason. Appraiser can only exercise on faith. Uh, you want to figure out why it is well, like we're screaming like we won the lottery when we're broke as four flat tires. Uh, we know we broke. You don't have to remind us how broke we are. But there's something inside of us that says faith is greater than my circumstance. The reason why some people call you arrogant and stuck up uh, when you don't even have anything is because they're looking at reason. Uh, but I got some folk in here who know you to bomb and you ain't got nothing uh, because you got some faith inside of you uh, that says that, that God is about to turn it around. Uh, don't you know God rewards faith over reason and to prove it to you there's somebody sitting on your row who's got a better degree but they not as happy as you uh, they look better but they don't have a man y'all ain't helping me uh, because God rewards faith over reason what does faith says faith says God is commanding me to do something that doesn't make sense hey, if it makes sense it does not require faith but if God is asking me to do something thing uh, that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard now that's faith and that's why some of you all are about to go crazy in the overflow because the devil is about to have a nervous breakdown he doesn't understand how you came to church seven o'clock on new year's eve night uh, when you turned on righteous town and saw the traffic reason told you i'll never get in there but faith said there's a seat that's got my name on it i don't know who i'm talking to in this house uh, there's somebody that reason says with all of the cigarettes you smoked uh, you should have cancer reason says after all the one night stands you had you should have had HIV reason says with your criminal record you shouldn't have a job but I wonder if I got 50 folk in here who can say later with what the doctor says forget what the bank tells me forget about the friends that won't encourage me but on the inside faith is the substance of things hoped for is the evidence of things not seen look at your neighbor and tell him I got faith because it don't make sense uh, y'all be seated let me work my case uh, there is a man in second kings chapter 7 and this man is not a far fetched man uh, because he's living in a famine he's living in a place where there is no food he's living in a drought he's living in a season where nothing is growing and the man of God tells him I don't want you to miss this uh, that tomorrow the drought will be over you got to understand he says this uh, when no plants are coming out of the ground he says this when there are no grapes on the vine he says this when there are no oranges on the tree he says in faith tomorrow my drought is over y'all got to forgive me but I just came to make an announcement in this house uh, that by this time tomorrow your drought is going to be over the stuff you were living without God is about to give you the increase some of y'all are shaking your head saying it ain't going to happen uh, this is hocus pocus manipulation no this is faith and I just need about 1200 of y'all who know that by this time tomorrow God's going to get in the computer at Equifax and change my credit rating by this time tomorrow the doctor's gonna have to look at my chart again by this time tomorrow the car the dealer told me I couldn't afford they're gonna have to call me back and say it's 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 yours this time tomorrow somebody I forgot about is gonna call me and say you were just on my mind because the drought is almost over I don't know who I'm talking to but I just need 50 folk who are crazy in faith who know that I lived without some stuff in 2004 but I feel something in my bosom that's telling me that this 